Hi, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Cole Delbick, from HuffPost here in New York City. Today, we're joined by the cast and director of the new movie, Love, Simon, which hits theaters March 16th. Based on the book, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, Love, Simon is a movie that feels both universal and, importantly, specific to the LGBT experience. It follows Simon, a high schooler struggling with his sexuality, who's been secretly emailing another boy at school. The film reminds us that everyone deserves a great love story, and now we all have one. Let's take a look at the trailer. <laughs> hey, guys. How was the party? It was really fun. Aces. <laughs> He's wearing a woman's sweater, and he's drunk. Well, he didn't drive drunk, and he's home before curfew, so. That's what I thought we thought. Right? Yeah, we're good parents. Yeah, we're good. Right? Fake young woman. Good morning, Creekwood Hulk! My name's Simon. For the most part, my life is totally normal. I have a family that I actually like, and there's my friends. We do everything friends do. We drink way too much diced coffee. We walk gorging on carbs. So, I'm just like you, except I have one huge-ass secret. Hey, I like your, your boots. I said I like your, your boots. Goodbye. Nobody knows I'm gay. Have you seen the new post? About the closeted gay kid at school. What? Who do you think it is? Can I call you back? Dear Blue, I'm just like you. <gasps> this was a mistake. It's nice to know there's another guy at school with the same secret. When did you first realize? It was a bunch of little things, like my first girlfriend. I think I'm falling in love with you. Wow, thank you. Be right back. Wasn't my proudest moment. Sometimes I think I'm destined to care so much about one person it nearly kills me. Me too. I'm done living in a world where I don't get to be who I am. I deserve a great love story. And I want someone to share it with. But to find any way to your wild heart. Have you ever been in love? I think so. These last few years, it's almost like I can feel you holding your breath. I'm supposed to be the one that decides when and where and who knows. That's supposed to be my thing. Disclaimer, this is about to get romantic as F. You're not into Abby, are you? She's cute, but yeah. she's just not really my type. Mm. Not because she's black. I love black women. Not like, you know, I have a thing for black women. I just, I just, I just love all women. Let's give it up for Love, Simon, everybody. I just want to start off saying how special it feels to be on stage with you all. This movie was clearly crafted with so much love and care, um, and to have a big studio back this kind of story feels unprecedented, and I know this film would have meant the world to closeted middle school me, and I know um, it will to so many queer youth out there who have been itching to see themselves represented on screen. So I want to give it up again for you all, because this is seriously important. <laughs> So, I know you've been on sort of a cross-country screening tour um, with audiences. What has it been like to see the film with sort of the intended fan base and experience it all together? Maybe Nick, start with you? Yeah, so um, I, I think a lot of times when you're doing stuff like this, it's really easy to sort of uh, just, I don't know, check out a little bit. But the fact that we've been going around and like feeling how much love and like care and attention, and people like genuinely seem to like the movie, which is kind of... It's, it's been really cool to see like actual personal reactions to this thing. Because after you make a movie, it sort of like takes on a life of its own. And so to see what people have been saying is, has been really cool. It's been awesome. What about you, Catherine? I mean, uh, I, guess, I guess I'm here. Uh, last night was the, the first time I got to join in on a screening here in New York. And I know that it was raining and, and snowy, but there were two sold out cinemas and, and it was the first time I've been able to see kind of um, fans of the film and it was really, I don't know, it just hammered, it hammered home for me. You know, when you make a film you don't, or a TV or, or whatever it is, you don't necessarily do it with people in mind, you know, you just focus on the product, but I think that it's, it's very special and, and I'm so glad that it's resonating with people and, and going to a mainstream audience. Greg? 
Yeah, I mean, I would say it's uh, what's exciting is sort of twofold. It's the LGBT uh, individuals that come up and, and see themselves in the movie is, is really rewarding and visceral, I think, in a way that uh, is, is it's sort of become their movie now in that regard. And then, and then there's people who aren't LGBT who, uh, you know, who, who discover themselves in the film too and are equally moved. Uh, and that's, the, that's been the thing, I think, that's been so wonderful is people on both sides of the aisle just, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, emotionally connecting with the story and either seeing themselves in a parent or a friend or in Simon and, uh, and, and all the personal stories that you then get told. So many stories that we've been told already about people who said, I, I wish that, not that they just wish they had it, or maybe that they wish they had this film for their brother or their sister or their cousin or, you know, someone that, uh, that, that, that they know whose life that might have uh, affected in some, in some way. Alexandra? You know, it's funny the we say it in our title that everyone deserves a great love story, and I think that that really is true. And majority of the time... You know, we're ingrained to think that we're not enough. We're ingrained to think that uh, we don't deserve love and happiness. And just to see people's reactions when they see this movie and they see that possibility and they and, and they can understand that they're worthy, you know, that's what making movies is about, is making people not only feel better, but really starting that conversation of, of real human self-worth. And in this movie, you really get to see that. And then the way that the fans have been reacting to it has just been so pure and so full of love. And we're just, like, really happy to be here. <laughs> like, we have so much love for this project. And people actually loving it just as much as we do. It feels really good. So, Greg, I want to hear from you. What did you see in each of the actors on stage that made you think, that's my Simon, that's my Leah, that's my Abby? Um, well, I, I knew going in that uh, all of my favorite films from when I was growing up way back in the 80s, uh, you know, they all had all of those uh, actors, those young actors, all, you know, you knew you were going to sort of follow them the rest of their lives and the rest of their careers. You're always sort of, and, and so I, my dream was to put together sort of a best of the class of this like young generation and, and uh, each one of them knowing that they're not just going to, they sort of have a moment to shine in the film but that their career is in and of themselves to like capture them at this moment in their life before their own illustrious careers and all of the wonderful things that I think are going to kind of happen. They, they could all be leads in the centers of their own movies and to have them all together makes it more of an event, I think. Uh, and, and, and it allows for the story then to go different places because the audience wants to go to all those different places because they are in tune with that performer or that, that actor. And, and they each had a wonderful, we did chemistry reads uh, amongst them and, and they each had different set of chemistry and, and, and claimed a different sort of corner of the movie. And then we did rehearsals with, with them for about two weeks before we shot the film. And, and uh, you know, they, they brought so much identity to the characters uh, themselves that we had the writers there with us and we were sort of writing to just even some ways sometimes just keep up with them. Um, so you're, you're looking for stars. It's kind of an undefinable thing, but they all, they all possess it. Yeah, I mean, that comes across on screen. What about you guys? What sort of compelled you to take this role and sort of, you know, you felt that I need to play this role? Uh, for me, it was, um, my, my initial reaction to the uh, story was through Greg. He was the one who kind of championed this whole thing and he introduced the script to me. I thought it was really sensitive and sweet. Um, I, I thought it kind of was filling a void that we hadn't really seen before, which was this mainstream story about a kid in high school and his journey of coming out. Um, and that was something that I, I just thought was really interesting and kind of subversive too in its own way, in its like clean cutness and its mainstream. Uh, the way that it was so mainstream was at the same time kind of revolutionary. That's what I thought was really interesting about it. Um, I think Simon as a character too is a kind of a fascinating guy. I mean, he's obviously struggling with his, well, he knows, he's not really struggling with his identity. He's just struggling with how to tell his story and like how to come out. And so he's trying to navigate that whole thing. And he is, um, as a result of that, a very, I think, tightly controlled person. Like he has his regiment that he goes through every day. He like kind of checks his boxes and then that's it. That's, he doesn't really venture much outside his box because I think he's afraid people are going to find out that he's gay or that you're going to find out who they really are. And he's not ready for that to happen yet. So he it's, he's kind of lives this, like, at the beginning of the movie says, I live, I'm just like you. I live this perfectly normal life. 
Um, and so to see all that kind of get turned on its head is an interesting character arc. Uh, and he's, uh, yeah, he's also just, a, I think, as a protagonist, a, someone that we haven't really seen before represented this story. Uh, you know, as a gay character, usually they're dealing with something. Um, the character's like dealing with an emotional issue, or he's, you know, they've got a bad home life. Or, um, and with this, it wasn't that at all. He's like the Theodore Cleaver of gay <laughs> cinema. He's like clean cut, he's squeaky clean, and that's, uh, I think, important as well, because, you, you know, to have representation to show you kind of in the best possible light. Um, so there were, I mean, there were a lot of reasons, and Greg was just like a, a champion along the way in like making this movie, um, you know, as thoughtful and loving as it is. Uh, so, and then the rest of this amazing cast as well. So yeah, there were many, 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 many reasons. <laughs> what about you, Catherine? Um, I mean, I, th I think the audition for this came for me at such a an unseemingly like perfect time. I. I think I auditioned and, and was cast um, probably like a few weeks before we even wrapped season one of 13 Reasons, which is obviously like a very intense role to kind of dive into. Um, and then not shortly after, I kind of went into Leo. And I think that, I think that there were, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. I think there were a lot of factors that kind of contributed to, to what made Love, Simon so appealing and why it resonated with me so much. And I think the first was obviously the story, you know. Um, I think it's such a unique, it's told through such a unique lens, but also at the end of the day, I mean, you just read it and what struck me was was the pure kind of joy and, and beauty and, and the ability that the script had to kind of bring me back to like uh, moments and, and feelings um, in a way that felt very authentic. Um, and I, I think there's something beautiful about that kind of love story and coming, in, coming of age story that is, is timeless. Um, and I think in addition to that, you know, Leah, I was I was very, you know, and for me, having only ever done one job at the time, it was like, okay, well, high school, how is it different, you know? Um, and at the end of the day, I think that Leah is so different as a person and has such a beautiful and interesting story. Um, it, it was It was really interesting to play someone who is, I think, has quite a hard external shell. And you see in the movie, you see in the film that she plays a lot with manipulating like the external and the aesthetic and she has quite a, a, a tough and kind of almost viperish attitude when it comes to things that she doesn't understand or, or, or places or, or people that she's not familiar with, um, which I think I kind of relate to a lot. Like I'm, I'm very fierce and protective of my friends and, and, and that's something that I could definitely relate to. But also on the inside for Leah, it's like there was that complexity with, with the hard external shell, but also then when she was in her group of familiar friends, like with, with Simon and, and with Nick, it was this kind of like loose but insecure and, and a little bit like just just sensitive and, and open and, and fragile, but not in, a, not in a sort of like a submissive way, but you know, like a, in a fragile, strong way. I think there's strength to fragility. And that's definitely what I felt with her and, and her journey through all of this, you know, going from that familiarity and, and that consistency of having a friend like Simon for 10 years, um, you know, and, and him always being there. And then having someone like Abby come into the group and penetrate that friendship group and change the dynamic and, and watching everyone around you change and evolve and, and not knowing how you're meant to change or evolve is, is scary. And I think that's kind of the other big thing for this film for me that really resonated is in high school, you have this, this desperate want and need to be true to yourself and to be authentic. But also, on the other hand, you're trying so hard to, to understand who you are and, and who that person is. So I think all of those reasons. Yeah, the film really captures that tension, I think. Um, Alexandra, yeah, did Abby really resonate with you as a character? Definitely. I think that um, whenever I go and, I, and I'm choosing jobs, I like to think about what, what I'm actually saying with the job. What is the integrity of this project? Um, and obviously, after reading the script, the integrity was just through the roof. I mean, it was definitely something that I felt like I wanted to be a part of. Uh, not only because I think that we're educating people, but also because I think that we're creating allies with movies like this. You don't have to be a member of the LGBT community to support it. And I think that that's where it can get a little fuzzy in this day and age. It's like, oh, well, I'm not gay, so w what does this have to do with me? 
well, sorry, there are people around you, whether you know it or not, who are members of this community who could really use someone like you to stand up for them when they're being put in a corner, when they're being shamed, when they're being told that they're not enough. And I think that you get that not only from Leah's character and Nick's character and Abby's character, but you also get that from everyone in the movie. It's, it's, it's a movie that is really truly based on love. And when I think about the types of things that I want to put out into the world and to be choosy and selective of that, that's something that goes through my mind that I need to have. And after meeting Greg and everyone, I was just like, oh yeah, this is happening. <laughs> no, you're so right. Each character really has this distinct character arc and that's hard to do in an ensemble movie, um, but you guys totally pull it off. Greg, I want to hear, how did we even get here? Like, how did a big studio back this story? How did you shepherd this from the page to the screen? You've always been sort of a champion of LGBT representation in your work, but what compelled you to sort of take on this story? Uh, well, my office first heard about it when it was uh, still a book, and they uh, people in the office went after it as a book, and we didn't get the rights. <laughs> and so we were always aware of it. Uh, and then Fox 2000 and Temple Hill, who produced it, um, they got some wonderful writers, Elizabeth Berger and Isaac Aptiker, who uh, show run This Is Us, that TV show, and she's, they're very talented. And, uh, uh, and they're very talented writers. And I read the script on a Saturday afternoon, and it, I knew it was, it was I don't want to say just a high school, but it, I knew it was a high school movie or a movie set in high school around a high schooler. And, but it felt so much more to me when I finished it. You know, it's so rare these days in general that movies, regardless of the subject matter, have a blend of tones. You know, usually studios make a comedy a comedy and a drama a drama. And I grew up seeing movies that were both. You know, they had comedy, they had drama, they, they made you laugh and cry and feel. And so that's always something that I'm excited by. But the fact that this had a teen, openly gay protagonist at the center of the story uh, just felt so bold to me. And I kept trying to find comparisons in my brain of, of movies that I would have seen, you know, at my mall as a 17-year-old, that, and they just aren't there. And then I started thinking, well, why is it 2016 at the time? But why is it 2016 and this doesn't exist? And I, I went in and met on the job and just said to them, you know, look, even if I don't get the job, what can I do to help? Because it's so important you're doing this. And, uh, and I, I think Nick's used the word, but I think it's subversive in how important it is. It's not wearing its importance on its sleeve. It's just trying to, it's trying to be the, the best version of what one of those movies is. And it happens to be about a kid who's gay. And, and I think that's the, there, there's still lots of pro progress to go in terms of representation, and, and we're, we're just at the beginning. But, you know, I remember when TV was at the beginning, and we were struggling to get a gay kiss on TV, and then a few years later, executives were like, yeah, well, if the characters would kiss and they're two gay people, they should kiss, you know? And it changed, like, overnight. And in part of why it changed was just the fact that we were starting to tell those stories. And so hopefully we can start to see that same kind of change in representation in, in the film. We, we treated it the same as any movie, uh, you know, when you're just trying to make the best version throughout. But there were definitely key moments when I was just as a, as a gay person myself, finding myself drifting out of the director's chair and into watching it as the first gay audience, you know, seeing things that I was like, why is that so, it's just two guys about to kiss on a Ferris wheel, but why is that so extra profound for me? And I realized that when I was a kid growing up watching those things, and you're not represented on the screen. You have to do all this extra math in your head, and you're not experiencing the piece of art. You know, you're 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 having to think about it and imagine. Well, if that person was a guy and this was a guy, you know, and and here, you know, people can just uh, experience it. If you're not, again, once again, if you're not LGBT, you can still experience it. You just you get to walk in someone else's shoes for a little bit and see and feel what that that feels like. You know, I think there are a lot of sort of big expectations for this movie, and in my eyes, it lives up um, to all of them. But do you feel a certain pressure that this has to be the coming out movie um, and sort of represent the breadth of the LGBT experience? Because that's sort of a lot to live up to. You know, anyone can answer this one. I mean, I hope not. I think that this is just a domino effect. I'd like to think that this is one person's story because everyone's coming out story is different, you know? And I think that this is just a different perspective. But I hope that this kind of domino affects even more stories being told about um, something that is so personal and, and real, like coming out. I mean, I hope so. I mean, this, this, everybody I might come so out and be like, I mean, a lot of people are like, I came out in a car too, so who knows? I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, the movie is sort of this love letter to those who feel like they don't belong. Um, 
And that's high school in a nutshell for a lot of us. I'm curious, what were each of you like in high school? Was there a certain group that you belonged to? Or you were sort of a floater? What, you know, each, each one of you, I'd love to hear. <laughs> no wrong uh, answers. I think, um, yeah, I mean, in high school, I, I related to Simon in, 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 a, in a couple different ways, just in the sense that uh, he is someone who is, I feel like he's, he has his friend group, but he's able to sort of float from group to group. And that was definitely my high school experience, was being like a, somewhat of like a social chameleon of just kind of like going to these different areas and just like being able to fit in and trying to relate. Um, I wouldn't say that I ever really fit in with any one particular click or anything like that. Um, like I wasn't a jock. I wasn't really a, wasn't like a theater nerd. I, wasn't, I mean, these are kind of stereotypes, but. Um, so yeah, I mean, I didn't, uh, in high school, I would say that uh, I was super cool and that's the end of the story. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Catherine, what about you? I'm down with that. No, I... Uh, <laughs> yeah, same, same. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like sort of somewhat similarly, like I never fit in anywhere. And I remember, I remember it was something that I was so confused about for such a long time. Um, because in, in my school, you know, especially when you're young, it's like there is like the popular group, the sport group, the music group, the... the, the, the like it's all it's all like labels and boxes and I think what I like learned the older I got is that no one fits into a box real pieces like for me like I was I was a swimmer but I was like too like girly to be in the sporty group and I was too like like nerdy to be in the girl like in the girl group but I was like pretty enough or whatever to be in the popular group and then I think I think I found my my kind of my my jam when I was um in high school probably like my last three years and it was honestly just like a group of kids who we were just all different, but like loved each other and good bunch of good bunch of kids, I guess. I think I think overall for like for high school, at least my last three years, um, I, I stopped swimming and I got very into music and I felt very like I don't know for whatever reason, maybe it's just like a friend thing, but like I loved everyone in my year group so much and I think that was a really unique experience. Like not every high school experience is like that, um, and it wasn't at my other schools, but. I was always very protective of everyone in my year group and I always wanted to make sure everyone was okay. And like I, I said earlier this morning, like um, <laughs> we kind of like when politics gets involved in education, I was like one of six in a drama group and I remember our principal was just like destroying the, the arts at our school and it killed me because I saw it affecting my friends and I saw that it affected me. And I remember being a 17 year old like <laughs> fighting the system like this is bullshit like yeah. like writing letters and being like we are not being taught the right course and I was like guys it's okay we're gonna get it so I think I was just like I just did my thing and it turned out okay <laughs> I think we would have gotten along um Greg they've also heard this but I was in the popular very popular subset of high school theater geek puppeteer Niche, okay. niche, okay. Niche, yeah. Okay. AV <laughs> club, AV club. I pushed the thing into your classroom, set up the TV when you had to watch a, a movie. Uh, kids who ate lunch with teachers, I was that kid. Uh, and uh, anyway, so, but I, 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 I think I was just trying to hide and disappear and blend in. So that, that's why I think in part why the story so spoke to me because I, you know, I, I, uh, I, you know, I, didn't, I didn't have the courage that a lot of young gay kids have now. Uh, I really didn't want to be noticed or stand out in that in that way, and uh, and I'm I'm really proud of them that they're that they're able to sort of talk about who they are at such a young age. Last but not least. Oh wow, um, I was I was a theater kid. I also loved cracking jokes. I think um, I have the worst timing when it comes to that. You know, like it's like and oh no, you read in the news someone died. I'm like laughing, and it's like not funny. Like I was that weird person who was just always laughing at inappropriate stuff. Um, but I definitely was that theater kid, and I hung out with a lot of the cheerleaders because I was like, you're so pretty and blonde and happy, and I'm like so like moody and all about <laughs> my artistic side. You know, uh, I came from an art school, so when I got into high school. 
school, it was a little bit different trying to fit into everyone's little boxes that I just kind of fluttered from one place to another. But the one thing I knew I could do at every school was make someone laugh. And so I think I just kept just doing that and doing that. And I don't know, it got me here. So <laughs> That it did. I'm happy about uh, it. You know, before we go to audience Q&A, this is a question for all of you, one of you, whatever who wants to take it. What do you hope queer youth who come see the movie in the theaters um, take away from Love, Simon at the end of the day? Greg, do you want to take this one? Well, first of all, I hope they tell people about it. I mean, I, I, it really is, it's, it stops being our movie at some point and starts being their movie. And I think everyone has to kind of carry that message forth. I mean, there's no louder uh, megaphone to Hollywood than, than you know, tickets being bought and people going to see things in the theater. Uh, and, you know, I think that's the, it, it really is their, their job now at that point to sort of spread the word if they loved it. But I, I would think that they, you know, uh, I love the notion of it being a conversation point between them and a friend or them and a parent or, you know, uh, I, think, uh, I think when the movie stops, if it keeps living with them the way so many of those films still live with me today when I see them on TV, you know, uh, I'm, I, I remember my entire youth. I don't just remember that movie, and, and I connected with it like it was a, a person or an old friend, and I, I think we, we hope to make a connection with them in that way. Yes, everybody go see this movie, please. It's so good. <laughs> uh, okay, audience Q&A, who's up first? Me. Hi. Hi, my name is Shamai. I love the movie. Um, since today is International Women's Day, I was wondering, which women inspire you? <sighs> good question. I think that the woman that most inspires me is my mom. She's a two-time breast cancer survivor. Um, she's a kundalini yoga teacher. She raised me and my brother in the 90s when it was very uncouth for a white woman to be raising black children. And uh, I think that her strength and her idea that it doesn't matter who you are, it matters how you show up on this earth and how to treat people with love and compassion within that, really just like, she just, she set the bar, and I'm just trying to reach it. I mean, that's, I don't know how to, how to follow that, but <laughs> I'd have to say, <laughs> um, I'd, I'd have to say a shout out to my mom as well. Um, you know, I, th I think there's no better place to start than that, but I think, I think overall I would say as well, I feel like I, I feel like in some way or another, you know, I I look up to the women around me, like regardless of who they are, um, you know, whether they're older or younger. Um, you know, the Times Up movement. I was able to look at all these actresses who have had so much experience in Hollywood doing things for me that benefit me, so that I can pass that privilege down and hold the door for people coming up after me. But you know, co contrary to that, you know, someone younger than me, like Emma Gonzalez, who who is speaking her mind, and, and you know, I don't want to, I don't want to build her up on social media because sometimes that stuff gets confusing. But I think that the essence of that and that fieriness, like I, I am inspired by young people today and young women today because it, it, using your voice is is inspiring and it's powerful and it's strong. So, I. Thank you for that. Um, another question. Hi. Hi, guys. I'm just wondering, how did you guys each prepare for the role that you took in this project? Uh, well, for me personally, I, I prepared um, a couple different ways. Mainly, it was through talking with Greg and sort of hearing some of his experiences as well. Um, and uh, before we started filming, too, uh, I was in New York, and I saw uh, Dear Evan Hansen, which was an interesting, it's a great play, it's a great story, and um, the, it, it has a lot of parallels to uh, Simon, and I thought Ben Platt did a great job kind of bringing that like tentativeness and like being unsure about what's the right answer. Um, and then uh, on top of that, we also had about a week of rehearsals as well before we started, which was really helpful to just kind of get um, get the jitters out and let's have a safe space to like try things and fail and have conversations and talk. So that was really helpful too. And we got all got to know one another the week before, which was great before we actually like had to pretend to be best friends. Uh, so um, yeah, I mean, all those things combined. And um, also I think as, uh, as we were making it, I was also kind of learn, it was sort of, we were learning as we went, you know, and trying to figure out what worked and, before everyday uh, shooting, um, 
or most days anyway, uh, Greg and I would like go over the shot list and like what we were about to do for the day and sort of what the beats were for each scene. Um, and there was just really an overall sense, I think, of, uh, of just excitement and inclusiveness and like a, a willingness to try things that you might not normally. Um, this set felt really just, uh, it was a very, uh, it was a great place to come to work in the morning for sure. It was just everyone was, was just on board and like I think tuned in. Yeah, it comes across so well that there's really authentic bonds of friendship between you guys. It's like, I want to be in that car drinking iced coffee, <laughs> belting my lungs, you know? It was just, you feel that, you remember that from your own experience. Um, another question. Hi, guys. So I actually had the opportunity to watch the movie last night, and I just wanted to tell you guys you did phenomenal, incredible job. So my question is for all of you. Um, you guys filmed this in Atlanta, right? So um, I was wondering, what is your favorite memory off screen together, like filming? Ooh, I think my favorite was dancing with uh, with Cat when we were like, uh, like Greg came up to us and was like, "You guys just freestyle. You're really like, you know, behind Nick and George. You know, just do whatever you want." And I think that, and of course, Leah's character is so reserved and and very sweet. And I'm over here just like dancing <laughs> on Cat. Like that was my favorite. Just getting to like be silly and like low key on camera at the same time. That's always fun. It's just to let your hair loose and just like get freaky. Yeah. That was very memorable. Um, <laughs> in the best way. No, it was fun. No, it was the best. Um, I feel like we've got a lot, of, a lot of great memories. I would have to say one of my favorite memories, aside from all the cool stuff we got to do during shooting, was um, the rap party. Um, I don't know why. I just, I, like, I really love learning new things and uh we were we were having a rap party sort of in the it was almost like the bottom level of an of a mall with like a cuzar and like a like lots of fun but there was a uh, a golf cart um and uh nick robinson and i here um learned how to drive that golf cart <laughs> um yeah nearly crashed it was great um it was good fun yeah that was probably a ruckus moment yeah don't drink and drive <laughs> Party sounds fun. Um, <laughs> and we have one more question for you all. Hi, guys. I was just wondering, who do you think relates to their character's personality the most? Hmm. Logan. Actually, yeah, definitely yeah. Logan Miller. Uh, yeah. Logan was kind of the perfect Martin, I think. He, um, he is hilarious in person, and he just has like this really unique personality. And, uh, but I, it's cool. But it's cool. Yeah, yeah like yeah, Martin was cool. a little bit of a dweeb, whereas Logan's actually like a cool guy. Like, yeah. not only is he funny, but he's got this like swag confidence about him mm -hmm. that's like, I might be wild, but you're into it. And you're like, okay, I am. I'm into it. Yeah, that's a hard role to play, but he really nails it. Um, I lied to you before. We have one more question, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi, um, I'm a fan of all you guys, by the way. My question is for Nick. How is it, like, or was it hard playing a character that is, like, so different than, like, your other roles? Or, like, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it, what, I, it was a challenge, but it was a welcome challenge. Like, I was really excited to try something that was different. Um, and uh, it, it felt this time around, too, like, uh, just between conversations with everyone and like talking about it that this actually had the potential to be uh to be helpful as well so that was kind of a um that was a great way to like get up in the morning and go to work where it's you know a little less selfish maybe uh and it feels like it's um you're actually you know doing something that uh uh could yeah potentially help people um and uh i felt that as a whole, this character. One of the cool things about Simon is that, you know, he's different than parts that I've played, but he's, he's, he's kind of similar. I mean, he's not that different, you know? I mean, he's really like a relatable person. Um, and that, I think, was the, one of the points of the film and one of the things that I thought made it so cool was that it really wasn't trying to be, um, like really highlight the fact, you know, that he's gay or that he's, um, in the closet. It really was just kind of this very human story about this kid in high school, and that's what I thought made it different, and that's what excited me about it. 
Well, we have to let you go. Everyone go see Love, Simon in theaters March 16th. Yes, someone's seen it three times. Okay, four times. Let's do it. Um, let's give it up Thank for the you. cast and director. Thank you.